Hi everyone, my name is Nick. Welcome back to Lafayette Systems. Today we're working on my amateur rocket with 3D printed air brakes. This rocket will use its air brakes to fly to a very precise apogee altitude. Last video we designed the airframe, printed out our fin can and air brakes module, and built the airframe. Today we're designing and prototyping our simple rocket flight computer. This is the small onboard computer that will tell how high or fast a rocket is and will compute how much air brake deflection is needed to get to that target altitude. We're going to look at our flight computer requirements, design our circuit, and write some test code to get the flight computer up and running. In a later episode, we will design our air brakes guidance and control algorithms, and we will simulate them in MATLAB, and finally, we'll fly our rocket. If you're just getting into model rocket active control, or are building your very first flight computer, this video is a great place to start. The first step of any system design is to define its requirements. What does our system need to do? How well does it need to do it? and how much time and money do we want to spend on this project. Last video, we briefly touched on these requirements, but I'll go through them again. First, we don't want to do any circuit board design. We're going to be using a solderable breadboard to make assembly easier. Second, we're only going to use sensors with available Arduino libraries to make interfacing with them easier. Third, we're going to use single-use 9-volt alkaline batteries. Rechargeable batteries are great, but if our battery dies at the field, just replacing a 9-volt battery from a big stash of fresh ones is really nice. For sensors, we're going to use an IMU, or an inertial measurement unit, and a separate barometric pressure sensor. We're going to need an input button to arm the flight computer. We also need an output buzzer and LED. We don't want any wires crossing the separation point of the rocket, so all of our electronics, including our servos, should be forward of the parachute and payload bay bulkhead. Finally, we need a micro SD card to store all of our flight data and read it out on a laptop. Next, let's do our component selection. But before that, a quick word from today's sponsor, Brilliant. If you're just getting into flight computers or active control systems, it's easy to get overwhelmed, and that's okay. Nobody's born with the knowledge of C++. A lot of fields like circuit design and programming are hard to dip your toes into without a bit of a foundation. Brilliant.org is one place to build that foundation. Brilliant offers thousands of online lessons covering subjects like programming, data analysis, and AI. It's an effective tool because you learn by solving practical problems, not by just memorizing things. Don't know anything about designing an electrical circuit? That's okay, Brilliant has you covered. Their circuits course starts from square one, and it'll get you up to speed on resistance, voltage, and current in no time. If you're new to programming, Brilliant can help you there too. Their programming courses will get you writing your own code before you know it. Plus, you can learn from your phone or computer, so it's easy to get a quick course in while you're on the go. If you're ready to start learning for free today, go to brilliant.org Lafayette, scan the QR code on screen, or click my link in the video description. Brilliant's also offering rocket engineers like you 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to all of the courses that Brilliant has to offer. Next up is to select some components. This is done kind of parallel to our circuit design, but I'll go through which components I picked. An important caveat here is I don't claim that these are the best components for a flight computer. In fact, I don't even think picking the absolute perfect sensors should be your goal. Your goal should be to make a flight computer that works. And these components work. If you're wondering, and probably typing in the comments, does this IMU or this barometric pressure sensor work instead? The answer is probably yes. What I'm going to do today is walk you through the process that I use to choose these components, and you can use that same process for your rocket's requirements. First is the microcontroller. This is the brains of the flight computer, and it's what's running the flight code. For my microcontroller, I chose the SparkFun ATSAMD21 Mini Breakout. The ATSAMD21 is a great little microcontroller with plenty of RAM, some analog inputs, and independent SPI and I2C buses. This breakout board has 0.1 inch pitch pins, perfect for our breadboard. I can code this in Arduino, which is C++, and that's a programming language that I know well. Our guidance and control algorithm is not going to be very complicated, and this processor is plenty powerful for us. I could use a more powerful processor like a Teensy, but I wouldn't be using the extra processing power available anyways. Next up are our sensors. We will need two types of sensors for this rocket. First, a barometric pressure sensor. This type of sensor measures the atmospheric pressure to tell us our pressure altitude. As a rocket flies up in the air, the air pressure decreases. We can measure this air pressure decrease and compute our altitude. I chose the BME280 in this mini breakout board form factor. This sensor is plenty precise enough for my use case, and I can interface over I squared C, so it's my choice. Next, we need something called an inertial measurement unit. 
IMUs are a combination of multiple sensors. These generally include an accelerometer, which measures the acceleration on the rocket, and a gyroscope, which measures the rotation rate or angular rate of the rocket. IMUs are defined by how many axes they have. A three-axis accelerometer has three axes. If we combine that with a three-axis gyro, we now have six axes. Some IMUs even have a three-axis magnetometer or a temperature sensor, which will give us a nine or 10-axis IMU. The ICM-20948 is a nine-axis sensor. Now, I'm really only gonna be using one of these axes, the vehicle's acceleration along its long axis. For this simple rocket, I don't plan on doing any attitude determination at all. That math can get a bit advanced. That being said, this sensor will let us log lots of good data, and it means we can use this flight computer for more complicated rockets down the line. For your IMU, I would recommend any unit that has a gyro limit of 2,000 degrees per second or higher, and an accelerometer of 16 Gs or higher. 24 Gs is a lot better, but if you go with a 16 G accelerometer, make sure you carefully check your open rocket model's peak acceleration for each rocket motor you intend to fly. That peak acceleration should be under 14 Gs to ensure you don't saturate the sensor during liftoff. The other consideration, coming from our requirements, is that I need to choose sensors with available Arduino libraries. Both of these sensors come with libraries made by SparkFun. Any breakout boards from SparkFun or Adafruit generally have libraries available, but it's always good to double check. Writing your own sensor libraries is a good exercise for an embedded programmer, but it's more complexity than we'd like for this particular project. Lastly, we need to be able to record data from our flight, and our requirements specify having a micro SD card on board. This micro SD card module from SparkFun is a small form factor, which is awesome. It also has all of its pins broken out at 0.1 inch spacing, so it's perfect for a breadboard-based flight computer. Now that we have our components, it's time for schematic design. This is the process where we lay out all of our components on a diagram and draw all of our electrical connections. We're gonna use this schematic later to wire up all of our electrical components. There are different tools to use, like uh, fritzing, or you can even use KiCad schematic designer. I'm actually just gonna use PowerPoint. It's an engineer's best friend, and it's totally free. So here's all of our components as discussed. I'm also adding a five volt regulator to bring our battery voltage down to the input range of our microcontroller's onboard regulator. First, I drew all of our power connections, showing where current is flowing from the battery to each of the components. You can see we're using the microcontroller's onboard 3.3 volt regulator to generate the 3.3 volt rail used by our sensors. Next, I drew out our data bus connections. I'm using the inter-integrated circuit, or I2C protocol, to communicate with the IMU and the barometric pressure sensor. I2C is just two wires, a clock and a data line. I'm using the serial peripheral interface, or SPI, to communicate with the micro SD card reader, which has four wires. There's a clock line, one data line going each way, and finally a chip select line. This lets you use SPI to connect to multiple devices, but in our case we're only connecting to one. Both of our sensors could use SPI as well, but I2C is a little bit easier to wire. Unfortunately, we have to use SPI for our micro SD card, because that's the interface baked into SD cards from the factory. Next, I did all of our digital and analog inputs and outputs. I have an analog input coming from the battery via a voltage divider so we can sense our battery voltage. Second, I have a digital input from this button. We can use this button to change flight computer modes or something else if it comes up. It's always good to have a button available even if it's just for testing. I have a PWM or pulse width modulation data line out to our servo. This will be used to actuate our air brakes. I have a second output to our buzzer. This is going to use the Arduino built-in tone library to make some beeps for us. We can use this to beep out our maximum altitude or to indicate what state the rocket's in. Finally, we're using the onboard TX LED on the microcontroller for visual data output, so we can check this section off our requirements list. And here's the schematic as a whole. A little messy, I know, but with this, we can make all of our breadboard connections. So here's the breadboard after wiring all my components together. Again, breadboarding is a helpful first step in designing a system like this flight computer. It lets us easily change and add stuff and to test it out before we make any permanent solder connections. I've wired stuff up here by just following the schematic. Now flight computers don't work without code, so let's do a little bit of test code. This code is just meant to check that all of our sensors are working and to pull a little bit of data from them. Our best friend when writing code is going to be the example sketches that come with our breakout boards. I installed all of the related libraries into my Arduino environment and copied the initialization and sensor readout steps for both of my sensors. Alright, so we're all wired up. 
you can see this base here is actually something called cardboard. It's an aerospace grade material that's perfect for engineering applications like this. Now we've got our flight software here, so we're going to plug into the flight computer, upload it, and then we'll make sure that we're reading data from our IMU and from our barometric pressure sensor. All right, we are all connected, and you can see in the serial monitor we are reading our data in two separate columns. On the left side, this is our barometric pressure sensor data, and all this stuff on the right is our IMU data. So we can see our barrow sensor here measuring about 530 feet, that's pressure above mean sea level. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow on the sensor a little bit, and we'll see that the sensor output changes a little bit. So it's usually about 530. We can see it fluctuating as I'm blowing on the sensor. We can also see the IMU. So in this uh, left three columns here, we can see this is our accelerometer data, and the last of these columns is reading about 1G. So I'm going to take this guy, I'm going to rotate it vertically, and we can see the leftmost column is now reading negative 1G, and the one on the right is reading about 0. So as I rotate it back, we can see the rightmost column is reading about 1G again. We also have our gyro and our magnetometer data. If I take the board and I start to rotate it, we can see that right column of the gyro data is reading plus and then minus about, that's probably 40 degrees per second. I can also try moving the other axes to get it to wobble a little bit. So that means that this flight computer is up and running and we are reading our data from all of our sensors. So I think we're gonna end this episode here. We now have our custom rocket flight computer up and running and we're interfacing with all of its sensors. Next time, we're going to talk about the guidance and control algorithm that we'll use to run our air brakes, and we'll simulate some rocket flights in MATLAB. I'll also have some more videos on Sapphire, my custom carbon fiber supersonic guided rocket coming out as well. So if you're interested in either of these projects, make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you all next time.